and welcome to Emma's ESL English. Here we are on International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. Is that a thing? Can you say that? I don't know. So this week and last week, <clears throat> I did three readings. Uh, first from uh, Jane Goodall about compassion and love. And second from uh, Rennie Eda Lodge about um, why you should do your own thing and, and actually make a difference with racism, essentially. And third from this book, uh, a poem by Simon Begum. And so in this episode, really, I just wanted to um, kind of have a chat, basically, you know. So if you have heard those readings, if you were confused by any of the language or anything um, in there, then feel free to go over to the blog, www.mzslenglish.com, where it's all written down, different vocabulary you can see. Of course, you can always just go to a dictionary. That's cool. <laughs> That's okay. You can go to a dictionary. But um, a student of mine, even though she has access to the dictionary and Google, um, quite often gets really frustrated because that doesn't seem like enough of an explanation. So in the blog, I try and... Uh, go into a bit more detail and hopefully make it a bit clearer. If I don't succeed, if you still don't understand, please leave a comment in the blog and then I either I can explain it further or I'll do a video about it and explain it further. I do not mind. That is kind of the point. <laughs> That's kind of why we're here. So, International Women's Day. Um, Another student of mine was the one who pointed out that it was International Women's Day in March and I was like, that's a thing. And when she first mentioned it, I thought, I have no idea what I'm going to do about that. But then when I was sitting thinking about it last night, I, I, well, several people have mentioned that they like me reading. So that's one thing. I do think it's helpful to hear someone speaking English and try and match that with the subtitles so that your brain can get used to the sounds that it's hearing and the language that you're reading. Um, I think that's a really helpful way for you to um, slowly build your listening skills, which if you're having conversations with people, of course, your listening skills are kind of key and important. Um, but also, I think reading is a really great way to learn. It's not the only way to learn. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about Einstein. He didn't really try very hard to learn, but he did use newspapers. So that's something we're going to be looking at. But um, it's not the only way to learn. And I think conversation, having conversations is really a key thing. But also, English is an international language. That's kind of why you're learning it, right? Um, you can travel anywhere in the world. And if you can speak English, you will usually be able to find somebody who can help you or answer your question. Um, because it's an international language, it allows international people and cultures to express their experience, history, culture, in a way that far more people can understand than in, if they were to just do it in their own language. So for me, it's a tool. It has always been a tool. Ever since I started learning how to teach English, I understood that it was a tool for people to um, increase communication, to help us know each other better. It's a really important tool. So that's why, that is the reason why I wanted to read from three different kinds of women that we don't tend to hear from so much in the media. Um, it would be super easy for me to like pick famous British novelists. We've kind of done that a few times, <laughs> definitely. And it's super fun and definitely we want to continue doing that. But since this is a sort of different kind of occasion. I really wanted it to be something that is looking at it from a different perspective, you know? I don't know about the rest of you, but I feel really stressed out about the way that the world is going at the moment. Like, really stressed out. And I don't know how in my little world I can do like anything to make a difference, um, to make the world a better place. As a young person, that was my dream. I wanted to change things. I wanted to make the world a better place. And the older I've got, the more difficult and complicated that seems. 
Um, and so it's really frustrating to feel like we have all the solutions. They're right there. And those people in positions of power just don't want to use them. It's really annoying. So I think one of the ways that I can help make a difference is first to help you learn more English however that happens to be, however that is that you need, because if you can master English, then you can do more in your life. You become a more powerful person. Um, you have more choices. That's something I've learned from my students over the last, you know, three, five years is that English gives them power. They can move to another country. They can study in another country. They can have a job that is still them living at home, but they're working with people around the world. So many ways that it can make you more powerful. And I want more of that for you. So for me, part of the thing I can do is to help you learn more English. And the other part is to hopefully open your mind and broaden your horizons. I have had an unusual life. <laughs> you know, when I speak to people in my country, most people go on holiday for two weeks a year. They go to Spain. They, they these days they travel a lot further. Um, I've lived in other countries for years. And the reason for that was I was really curious. I wanted to understand what is different about this culture. What is, <clears throat> excuse me, what is, um, what can they do better than us? What can we do better than them? What is good about this culture? What is, what can I learn from this culture? That's really been a big thing of mine. What can I learn from this culture? And I don't even have to go anywhere. Like I started learning Chinese in my living room. <laughs> And I haven't been to China, like, for years. <laughs> I've been twice. <laughs> but I haven't been since I started learning Chinese. The irony. Um, so, but just that, just learning about Chinese culture has given me a different perspective on my life. Like, actually, how do I want to live my life? What is my priority? So I hope that by sharing with you writing from different people from different sources, from different perspectives. I hope that it helps you see that there's a big wide world out there. There's a lot happening everywhere in the world and you have a choice. You can choose how you want to be a part of it. And I hope maybe it gives you a little motivation <laughs> for your English too. It's really super hard to learn a language and to maintain the motivation over time, so much time, to learn a language to a point of fluency. Like, seriously, you guys are awesome. Like, I dream of being able to understand people in another language the way that you all understand me. Really. You've got to appreciate the amount of time you guys have put into learning English. Learning a whole other language and way to express yourselves. That is a major commitment and you have done it fantastically. I'm super impressed. Like anytime I meet a new student, I'm always like, wow, you've done so much. And I feel super guilty that I really didn't try very hard. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm British. We suck infamously at learning languages. Just ask the French. <laughs> you really ask anyone in Europe. They all judge us for our terrible language skills. And they are right to judge us because really, seriously, we can do better. <laughs> It's embarrassing, but at the same time, I'm really glad you guys are learning English because I like talking to you all. <laughs> I love my students. I love meeting my students. I love hearing different people's perspectives from different parts of the world. And the fact that you worked so hard to learn English means that I now have a gateway 
into your culture and your lives and your experiences. And that's really important for me. And I really appreciate it. So on this International Women's Day, I say, awesome women, you're all brilliant. Thank you for being awesome and brilliant and keep up the amazing work. And and awesome men too, you're, you're pretty good too, I guess. <laughs> I really hope these three readings were useful to you. Um, you know, it's really hard right now. We need to have some really serious, difficult conversations about race, about war, about money. Sadly, it needs a discussion about capitalism, about politics, about so many things. Yeah, the climate looming, <laughs> looming there, the climate. There are so many things that we need to have really hard discussions for. And I think, uh, I think we're not very good at having hard discussions. Yeah, it's a problem. Um, yeah, I don't know how we fix that problem. I know I'm being a bit preachy today and I know people hate preachy. I've learned that's not how we fix that problem. <laughs> but, um, hopefully by seeing some unusual perspectives and hearing from some women that we don't tend to hear from as much, um, that can make you feel the compassion that, that Jane Goodall talked about and feel like it's worth listening to those perspectives. Like those people that we're not listening to really do have good things and important things we need to hear. Um, yeah. People who are uh, minorities, indigenous people, so many people have things to say that we really need to hear. And so hopefully this, uh, these readings that I did just gave you a little opportunity to uh, broaden your horizons and see something from someone else's perspective um, on this International Women's Day. I think I said that like 60 times today. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I did my speech. That's it. <laughs> okay, next week is like way easier. <laughs> we're, we're, we're downhill from here. We've had quite a serious few weeks. Don't worry. It's all over. <laughs> There's no more seriousness left at all, at all in this month. <laughs> all right. See you next week for Einstein's birthday. Who knew? <laughs> wow. Bye.